Hi, my name is Dr. Daniel Fox, I'm a licensed psychologist in the state of Texas, an expert in the area of personality disorders. And I wanted to make a, a video on sort of medication misconceptions of obviously uh, psychotropic medications. Now before I get into that, I, I want to, sit, to mention of course that I'm a psychologist, not a psychiatrist. So I do not prescribe medication. But I work with a, a lot of uh, psychiatrists and other uh, medical professionals who do prescribe. And I think um, the aspect that I'm going to talk about, kind of having a degree of understanding or expectation of what medication can do and how it can help you, I think is really important. Uh, I have this this um, this conversation with most, if not all, of, of my clients, and I hope that that you find it useful and, and beneficial uh, to you. Um, if you like this video, please subscribe and click the little bell and all of that stuff. And um, I hope that that you enjoy it. So here we go. Let's get to it. So. <clears throat> What I want to talk about is talking about medication. Um, now, of course, my, my area of specialty is uh, personality disorders, particularly cluster B, which are uh, antisocial, uh, narcissistic, borderline, and, hist and histrionic personality disorders. And a lot of my clients do take medications for, for, for various reasons. Uh, a lot of personality disorders also are comorbid with other disorders as well. So that means they exist together, such as depression, anxiety. Um, higher, uh, there's a higher probability of having a psychotic reaction, uh, not necessarily schizophrenia, but having a psychotic reaction or a psychotic break, acute psychotic episode. Uh, if you do have one of the four cluster B personality disorders that I, that I mentioned here, so sometimes, you know, there, there is a, uh, a very serious need for medication. Um, now, my approach to personality disorders is that there is core content and surface content. So surface content, these are all these expressive behaviors, which can be uh, self-harm, uh, suicidal acting out, uh, it can be uh, like stalking behaviors, can be depression, can be anxiety. But what I do as a psychologist is I, I treat the core content, what's underneath. Now, if we're talking about medication, why am I talking about that? Well, the reason why I'm talking about that is because medication treats surface structure. It does not treat core structure. There is no medication for personality. There is no medication that can, I don't like the word cure, that can get rid of um, borderline personality disorder, narcissistic personality disorder, antisocial, histrionic, there, there's just no medication for personality. As, as much as so many people wish there were, right? You could slip somebody a pill and all of a sudden their personality would be completely different. But the reality is, is that we don't have that. And so we have to recognize that at borderline personality disorder, that a lot of those features, um, or the other personality disorder as well, a lot of those features can be managed or treated with medication. But here's the thing, and this is what I think is the main focus of the video, is that medication, okay, so prior to taking medication, you can have a response range of this, okay? Now, this response range is pretty great, okay? So what happened, not great like good, but great like wide, like large. And what the medication does is, if it's appropriate medication at an appropriate dose, of course, talk to your psychiatrist or medical doctor. What it does is it decreases that and it makes it into a manageable spectrum, right? A manageable area. And in this area, see this area here where my little thumb is right there, that this is where you can utilize coping strategies. This is where you can get out of bed. This is where the anxiety doesn't prevent you from functioning. This is where you don't engage in all those impulsive acts and behaviors. And uh, if you have narcissistic rage or um, you know violence and other types of things, medication can help go from here to here, but it doesn't go from here to here. And this would mean and the medication gets rid of all of those problems and all of those issues. And I talk to a lot of, of my clients who have the expectation, well, I'm on this, this, and this, you know, and I'm still lonely. I still feel empty. I still feel like I have low self-worth. I still feel afraid. I still feel shame and all these other factors. That's because there's no medication for core content. Those are core content issues. That that's where the therapy comes in. That's where learning different strategies. And some people can't afford therapy, and I understand that. You know, then there's workbooks or there's different types of activities that you can do. Uh, there's different like YouTube videos, of course. Um, you know that 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 you can use to help yourself learn those skills because we would set up here, 
now we're here. And, th and it's important to understand that, but the expectation that the medication is going to get rid of all of those, that emptiness and that abandonment and all those other issues, I think that people end up very disappointed. And then they end up with this, this unrealistic expectation of what medication can do. And medication, again, can lessen a lot of that surface structure, but it can't deal with core structure. So it's important to recognize that, uh, talk about that with, you know, what are those surface structure behaviors, which is depression, which is, you know, the anxiety and acting out and impulsivity and all those other factors. And if there's medication that can help you. But here's what happens with a lot of my clients. Uh, I work with a lot of my folks for years. And when they first come to me, a lot of them are on medications and things. And, you know, the medication, if, if it's working and it's effective and it's efficacious, it'll, they'll tell me about, you know, where they used to function here. And then it was lowered to here. And this is where what kind of we start working together, right? Where my little thumb is and we're working together. Right? And we're learning those coping strategies. And then what happens as those coping strategies are utilized and, and my clients encounter other stressors or unexpected change, they utilize the coping strategy. And what happens with a lot of my clients, not all, but a lot of them, is they require less medication. And that's where I have all this contact with medical doctors and psychiatrists and things. Because as you build that coping strategy is that you can use the medication less. Of course, you talk to your psychiatrist about it, you talk to your mental health provider about it, you, do, you don't do it on your own, right? So you talk to them so they're watching you and managing it appropriately. But it can, it can do it, you can learn those skills and it has happened with a lot, a lot of my clients and I, I'm really happy to say that many of them, uh, not all, have really significantly decreased their, their need for, for medication by using these coping strategies. And it's something you know for you to talk about with a mental health provider, something to consider, but also to have the expectation of what medication can do, but also what it can't. And I think that that's really important. Please leave any comments that, that you may have uh, in the comments section. Um, and again, I'm not telling you what to do with your medication. Uh, this is just an understanding of how medication um, works for personality disorders and how it functions and how it can assist your functioning, but also that it doesn't get rid of it. And I think that it's important to recognize that. I hope that you found this video helpful and thank you nope, nope. <laughs> very much and have a good day. Bye-bye.